So why rename media files? Well, personally, I don't want my computer cluttered with meaningless numeric file names which come down from Ancestry. I want to name those into something that I can search on and make more use of. Imagine going down the library and all the books have numeric titles. It just wouldn't work. Humans don't read numerics very well. Computers do. If you haven't decided upon a file naming structure which suits your needs, check out my video and also check out the notes in the support material which were supplied by another family historian user. His system is completely different from mine and has different needs. All you need to do is decide on a system which best suits you and that you can repeat time after time. Firstly, I'm going to describe how to rename files in Family Historian, which is very easy. It's also very easy in Family Tree Maker 2019. And from the advertising blurb, Herd is 2024, now have the facility to rename files. Unfortunately, Roots Magic still doesn't have that feature. It's been long asked for, just has never come along. For my Roots Magic subscribers, I'm going to show in the second half of this video the system I adopted before I left Roots Magic behind, and it actually still serves me very well. Preparing the files, new files, before getting them into Family Historian adds extra benefits, and I'll be describing that in the second half of this video. Renaming files that have come down from Ancestry in a numeric format into Roots Magic is still a difficult task, and one for the Roots Magic forums. So let's jump in. My last video on downloading your tree and media from Ancestry has been getting an awful lot of views. Very, very popular video. And that is supported by, if you read on the Ancestry forums and different things on Facebook, an awful lot of people are not happy with the way Ancestry appear to have moved their paywall and cut off a lot of features. At the end of that video, I showed you how to merge a couple of files. And if we look here, we can see that we have two files that are the same. How you do that in Family Historian is you go Edit, Merge Compare, then you select the second file, move it across, and click OK. You get your chance to drop the file name you don't want, discard, click Merge, and there we go. Now, eagle-eyed viewers may have noticed that I deliberately merged the wrong file. Here's the two identical records. They're still here. Oh dear. Terrible mistake. Well, not really. In Family Historian, you just go to Edit, Undo Merge Records, and here's this 604 record is now back. Simple as that. In Roots Magic, I would have had to go off and restore a backup and probably lose anything since my last backup. So a nice, simple safety net. To rename a file, first of all, let me explain. Say, for example, this file. If I double-click the image over here, I get this view, which I can then see the links, etc. But if I click the image over on this side, I get a different dialogue. Now I do wish Family Historian developers would allow the remembering of this dialogue. I don't often have a lot of notes, so I wish I didn't have to resize this every time. Once I get to this, the mouse wheel, we start to zoom in. We can see that it's a death certificate. We can see the person, we can see the date, etc. So to rename this file, what I do is go to Media on the top bar, Rename Media Files. I'm just going to move that slightly. So in this case, I change the file name to Eggleton-Alice-1985-February-12 and I'm going to put hyphen Scranton as a location. And then my tag on the end, which is the JEDCOM tag, which I explained in a previous video. And that's my file name. Now you can see this hasn't changed here because this is the title. So I'm going to change the title to Death Registration of Alice Eggleton. We know the date of the registration, so I'm going to put in the date field here, 12th of February, 1985. And I'm free to add any notes if I wish. In this case, I'm not. That's it. That's how simple it is to rename a file and give it a meaningful sort of title in Family Historian. If you're a Roots Magic user, there's a few things you need to be aware of. This is the latest version of Roots Magic, version 9, and this is the Media Gallery. Firstly, you can see it's far from being as informative. You do get extra details over on the right hand side here, but you only get that for whatever is selected at the time. 
It's not made up, but a lot of things got more difficult in Roots Magic version 9. The next thing I'm going to show you is how I prepared my files when I was back using Roots Magic. And I prepared them before adding them to the program. So let me take this. This needs to be renamed, and I'll do all that shortly. But firstly, I take that and I try and drag it to the media gallery. You can see the little red no-go symbol. And if I let go, let me see what happens. Nothing. The so little red no-go symbol, that's Roots Magic version 9. This is Roots Magic version 7, and this is the media gallery. Same operation, drag this over, and it's going to allow me to add it. You can see the little plus symbol. So that got harder in Roots Magic 9. And there's various little things like this why people stayed with Roots Magic 7, and a lot of people have migrated to Family Historian. So back to Windows Explorer, I'm going to prepare this file before adding it to the media gallery. I became accustomed to doing that back in Roots Magic 7 because there was no easy way to rename media within the program. So for new media, I kept them in a separate folder like this temp folder. I then right click, you can't see it, it's off your screen, select properties. And this is Windows Photo Viewer. Now, if your computer has evolved through Windows 7 and Windows 8 to an upgrade to Windows 10, you'll still have Windows Photo Viewer for selection. Microsoft have replaced that now with Windows Photos. Windows Photos does not give the same information. I've put a little information sheet in the support material just to help you sort of get Windows Photo Viewer back on your machine. So the first thing I can do here is I can change the title. How can I change the title when I don't know what the document is? Let's cancel out of that. So this time I'm going to right click and I'm going to select Open With and I'm going to select Windows Photo Viewer. So here we are, same document. I can zoom in, I can drag about it, look for everything I want to find. I know this is the 1910 census. I know it was enumerated on the 26th of April, 1910. I know it was in Lebanon Township in Wayne County, Pennsylvania. And let's have a look for significant names. This is an ancestor of mine. So what I do now is I right click on the image and I select properties. And here's my properties. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the name of this. So there we go, following my file naming convention, Eggleton Alice, 1910, Lebanon Wayne, Census. But I'm not going to finish there. I'm going to go to Details. I don't want the title to be that, so I'm going to change that. Date was 26 April 1910. Date taken. The authors, you could add something in here. The comments, add whatever comments you want in here. I'm going to add this rather long windedly. So there we go. And I've noticed several other names on this census return that I'm interested in. So what else can I do? Well, let me show you those names first of all. The Young family I know about. The Yeager family I know about. The Schumann family I know about. In fact, there's the Armager, which has been carried through the family. So do I copy this for all of these people and, and put it in different census returns? No, I'm going to go a different way and I'm doing this for demonstration purposes. So back to my properties. We've got tags here. So I've added several tags here. Young, Schumann, Jaeger, Gussie, and I've added a unique word, Vidger Bull. So this file stands on its own now. If I look at this file, I've got a unique file name. If I look at the properties, in the properties, I've got all of the details I need. Census return, I've got some tags here, I've got a description, I've got the date that it was taken, etc. So now I'm going to drag that file directly into Family Historian. You can see I get a little plus symbol. I just select add, don't copy link only, and there's our file. Nice and straightforward, isn't it? Except one thing. Let's have a look. Let me double click on the file. Here is all of the data which we added into the file properties. The date of the census, 
the title that we added, even the keywords that we added. And here's the description that we added. All of these families are on this census and we've got all of this data automatically dragged into Family Historian. Now, if this doesn't happen to you, go Tools, Preferences, select Media, and make sure this and this are both checked. Sometimes they've maybe got unchecked as you used Family Historian for some reason. If they're unchecked, you'll not get this functionality. One last thing that I want to do, I'm going to go back to my root directory. This is a two terabyte drive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in here. So the unique name, Vidger Bill, and it's brought me up Alice Eggleton, 1910 Lebanon census, single file through that unique name. Let me change that to Jaeger. And you can see I have a lot of Jaeger files here. So you want to get as much information into the file itself. I always say the file and the properties are king, and really they are. If you switch genealogy programs, you're going to lose some of this data. You're certainly going to use maybe lose the keywords, and I'm going to go into keywords in the next video. It doesn't matter whether I jump into Adobe Photoshop Lightroom, which is where I manage my images. And actually this file, so let's have a look for it. It's going to be quite easy to find. And let me tell you why. Files are sorted at the moment by capture time. 1910 must be fairly close to the top. This one has a capture time of 1841. It's an 1841 census. This is our image here that we just prepared. And you can see the file name, Eggleton Alice, 1910, Lebanon, Wayne. On the right hand panel here, you can see my description, my caption, and if I look at my keyword list and I run right to the very bottom of this, you can see the young is highlighted and there's the V'ger bill. That's how I manage my images. So they're all managed as images. Genealogy software comes second. So I hope that's helped you and I hope that's given you food for thought as regards naming your files and looking after the files themselves and the file properties. It's an absolute bonus that when you drag those into Family Historian, all of that data gets transferred and then you can sort and you can query on that. That doesn't happen in any other genealogy program that I'm aware of. That's it for renaming. All the aspects have been covered. I'll cover keywords in the next video and some of the filtering options that offers that'll be beneficial to your research and media management. I also want to demonstrate a recent plugin by Mark Draper, which helps you identify media that's on your hard drive and not currently connected to Family Historian. That could be very useful. The Family Historian user group has recently been updated with a list of videos. Coal Valley Girl has been doing her work and is to be applauded. Go check that out for some extra learning. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell if you want to get notifications of future releases and also check out the videos to my left. Thanks for watching. See you next time.